The year was 1961, and the world was full of promise. Providing for the establishment of a peace corps on a temporary... Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space, with American Alan Shepard to follow a month later. In California, Pat Brown was governor. And in the Bay Area, a new organization called the Association of Bay Area Governments was just getting underway. Abag's story is about a vision and a belief that the Bay Area together could tackle bigger and bolder challenges than if cities and counties were left to deal with those issues individually. It's a story of people who weren't afraid to dream big and work hard to improve the quality of life in the Bay Area. And it started way back with the Bay Area Council, who were a bunch of business people from San Francisco who felt they needed some way to cooperate with one another. And so special districts were being formed by the state with no local representation. A good many people felt that a more comprehensive regional agency was overdue, uh, and that perhaps it should be dealing with uh, air quality, <clears throat> uh, transportation, land use, water quality, and so forth, in an overall comprehensive fashion. ABAG's first home was a Claremont Hotel, which also housed the Institute for Local Self-Government and the Northern California Office of the League of California Cities. Mayor Claude Hutchinson of Berkeley was drafted to become ABAG's first president, and the former San Rafael City Manager Wilbur Smith was hired as the first executive director. Charter members included six counties and 54 cities, making it the first council of governments in California. The formation was formally slated as the permanent establishment of a forum for discussion and study of metropolitan area problems of mutual interest and concern of the cities and counties for the San Francisco Bay Area. The issues it set out to tackle affected the Bay Area as a whole, and the intent was to develop policy and action recommendations for the solution of such problems. Initially, two issues shot to the top of the list. Without ABAG's participation in coming up with a plan for halting the development of the Bay, we would probably today see it filled in. It was not an easy victory. 1964, I believe, is when they finally, uh, I believe Governor Pat Brown recognized that there was something to be said for stopping the bay filling. But secondly, uh, the transportation system uh, is a network, and we needed to uh, have a common approach and a cooperative approach in order to build and design the kind of uh, transportation system that really will serve this great metropolitan area. As the population of the Bay Area began to grow, the need increased for a regional approach to planning. ABAG's early projects included studies about uniform building codes, water pollution, tideland development, and an open space plan. That first decade also marked the creation of an airport system plan that coordinated the operations of the three Bay Area airports. And the next time you enjoy yourself at a California beach, you can thank ABAG. A series of policies it recommended in the 1960s resulted in the formation of the California Coastal Commission, ensuring that the public continue to have access to the ocean. ABAG began the 1970s with a groundbreaking publication, a 20-year regional master plan that addressed the preservation of open space regional information systems and technology support, criminal justice, water policy, waste collection, and earthquake safety planning. But perhaps the biggest impact of the agency happened in 1973, when Reven Tranter became executive director, a position he held for the next 22 years. When I first came here, uh, I think among the principal issues uh, to be tackled were achieving a more comprehensive um, approach to how the region should grow, relating, you know, air quality, water quality, 
land use, transportation together. The 70s were a pivotal decade for ABAG in a number of ways. In 1971, State Senator John Ferran was able to effectively convince his fellow legislators to vote for the formation of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, which would undertake regional transportation planning. In the State Assembly, John Knox made similar attempts to formalize ABAG as a funded regional planning agency, but those efforts never passed the State Senate. Decades later, Mr. Knox blames concerns about local control versus regional control. The biggest thing you have to face when you're proposing major change is fear. <laughs> As was Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And uh, that's true. I mean, people in local government have their prerogatives. They're proud of what they have and they don't want to lose it. And they're suspicious sometimes of people that try to move in. Now sister agencies, ABAG focused on land use, housing, planning and policy, while MTC was in charge of regional transportation planning. ABAG also became certified by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and began reviewing projects worth more than $700 million by the middle of the decade. When I was recently on the Sunnyvale Planning Commission and Sunnyvale had, uh, before, my before I was on the commission, had allocated about 23 million square feet of office space. And the commissioners were complaining about ABAG's housing requirements, saying, oh, there's no way we could ever build such and such a housing. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. You, you have a council and a planning commission that approved 23 million square feet of office space, and you're complaining about 4,000 housing units? Come on, there's got to be a balance. And I think that that realization, I think ABEC has done a tremendous job of making people realize that they, they have to have a responsibility for housing when they're, when they're encouraging so many jobs in the area. It is your responsibility to make Proposition 13 work. In 1978, California voters passed Prop 13, the anti-property tax measure which would be a game changer for the state's county and municipal budgets. In addition to its existing land use and housing responsibilities, ABAG looked to the needs of the next decade, the 80s. We started developing uh, a variety of service programs, uh, such as financial services, insurance uh, programs, training programs, uh, energy aggregation. We did this on behalf of our members to try to assist them in their responsibility because many of the local governments were getting their budgets stretched and uh, we felt by helping them uh, we could uh, improve again their delivery of services and also uh, the quality of life for their citizens. ABAG formulated a finance pool so that we could make decisions about how people could uh, fund projects and then back them up with the bonding necessary. The early 1980s also marked another milestone for ABAG a new home in downtown Oakland after spending nearly two decades at the Claremont Hotel. It was inconvenient. We had grown out of the facility. It was expensive. And, uh, and so we were able to reduce the cost of our annual rent uh, by moving into a more centrally located area right on top of a BART station um, in, in downtown Oakland uh, by creating the joint committee. I created it. I was the chair of the board of ABAG when we created it. And I was very proud to have appointed Joe Bort, who was the uh, grand old uh, supervisor from Alameda County, to chair that committee. And Joe uh, hammered heads and brought people together and, and got that, uh, got that uh, building built and it has been a great asset uh, to the region. The section of the West Grand Freeway has come down. The cyber structure has collapsed. The 1980s ended with the Loma Prieta earthquake in October of 1989. It helped to set part of the agenda for the 1990s. We've done a lot of work around earthquake preparedness. Uh, clearly this area is very vulnerable to earthquakes. We keep saying that there's not a question of 
whether there will be a big earthquake, the question is when and how prepared will the region be. ABAG has been a prime mover in raising that and keeping that in front of us as an issue and working very hard to get people to do something about it to the extent that we can. In 1990, ABAG created the San Francisco Bay Trail, which would encircle the bay. It would include neighborhoods and urban settings as well as natural areas, such as 130 parks, including 57,000 acres of open space. We have actually accomplished 300 miles of the 500 miles that was originally planned. So that is quite an accomplishment, and it's something that I don't think the, uh, uh, the broader community is aware of. And when I envision the completion of 500 miles of bay trails in our nine counties and our 101 cities, that to me is something truly magnificent that I think we all have reasons to be proud of. And why? Because we like the Bay Area. In 1996, ABAG launched the Bay Area Green Business Program, which encourages small to mid-sized businesses to go green. Well, green business just means that uh, the businesses that are part of this certification program are more conscious of, of being a green, green business, regardless of what they do. And I think it's, uh, it's important to them that uh, their consumers, the people they do business with, uh, see them as somebody that's really concerned about the environment. ABAG's move toward a paperless society began in the mid-1990s, when then-executive director Eugene Leong saw his first internet demonstration. He recalls ABAG training 75 local governments how to set up and maintain their own website after getting a federal grant from the Department of Commerce. That kind of initiative led to ABAG being the first Council of Governments to offer documents in the World Wide Web and the second public agency in California to be online. In 2001, the San Francisco Chronicle called ABAG's website a premier government website and portal. As ABAG began its 40th year and a new century, new priorities were set that included an emphasis on sustainability. How are we going to preserve these resources, which were ever dwindling? Today we find ourselves with even more dwindling resources, not only dollars, but uh, land, um, all of the other resources that are vital to this area. And so having looked at the three E's, as we called them, um, equity in terms of people participation, the environment, which is so critical, and economic development, which keeps the engine rolling. One of the things we've been working on recently um, that I, I think is pretty exciting is the whole issues around climate change and how do we look at how we plan for land use and development within the context of reducing greenhouse gases, um, being more efficient in um, how we use our resources, and um, developing areas in conjunction with our local um, governmental agencies about what areas are supposed to be planned development areas, our PDAs, or planned conservation areas, our PCAs, and incorporating those areas that are more generic from the ground up um, to uh, influence and help us define what our vision is for the region. We prepared a CCMP, a Comprehensive Conservation Management Plan, to protect and enhance the water quality in the San Francisco Bay and estuaries. This has been a very uh, complex partnership with uh, federal agencies, with state agencies, with regional regulatory agencies, and many of the uh, uh, local governments of the San Francisco Bay, as well as many um, uh, environmental uh, activists that have been uh, pushing for more and more uh, environmental protection in, in the, uh, the Bay and the San Francisco Estuary, which is uh, truly a national treasure. Preserving and protecting what's best about the Bay Area was the impetus for the formation of the 2004 ABAG MTC Joint Policy Committee, which coordinates regional planning. The common goal is really encompasses not only those two agencies, but we have two other partners at the table also, BCDC, the Bay Conservation Development 
Commission as well as the Air District. But primarily, the focus is on what ABAG and MTC have to do. MTC has to put together a regional transportation uh, plan for the entire Bay Area, and ABAG has to come up with the regional housing allocation needs assessment, in which all communities, including the, each county, has a certain amount of homes which they are going to be required to show that they've been able to plan for to accommodate all income levels of housing over the next 25 years. I think that ABAG has done a very good job of really creating the forum of discussion on how we kind of look to our partners down south and say, you know, we really don't want to be like them. We want to be different. We want to be the Bay Area. We, we don't want to be a, a, an L.A., a Los Angeles. And I think that they've provided the forum of not only elected officials, but they've certainly reached out to the communities, all communities, which is tough. 101 cities, nine Bay Area counties, um, and made sure that their voices are heard. Looking ahead to ABAG's future, there's still much to do. Well, we've been here 50 years, and the Bay Area has grown. It's protected its open space. It built BART. It saved the Bay. It's done an awful lot of really great things. So the next 50 years, we have to protect ourselves from hazards like earthquakes and sea level rise. We have to spur the innovation of our industries. We have to grow our education system so that everyone has access to really good school programs. We need to create secure environments in our urban centers and really high quality urban life styles so that people still enjoy the Bay Area and do that in a way where people feel that the public investments are there to support that.